If Li Bai didn't drink, would he still write poetry? Was he really skilled in swordsmanship? The controversy surrounding Li Bai began from the time of his birth. He was fond of drinking, adept at swordplay, enjoyed traveling to the countryside, and traversed almost all the famous mountains and rivers within the Tang Dynasty. A natural genius, he spent his life in unfulfilled ambition. Despite being a well-known son-in-law, he was inherently proud, even daring to ask the powerful eunuch Gao Lishi to remove his boots. So, what kind of person was the historical Li Bai? In this video, let's follow the chronological order and delve into the life of the immortal poet Li Bai. From a young age, Li Bai had a fondness for swordsmanship. It is well known that the trio of Li Bai's poetry, Pei Min's swordsmanship, and Jiang Shu's cursive script were acclaimed as the Three Wonders of the Tang Dynasty. However, what is less known is that Li Bai's skill in swordsmanship was only second to Pei Min. In the year of Empress Wu Zetian's death, when Li Bai was five years old, he began to diligently study. By the age of 15, he had already composed numerous poems, demonstrating his natural talent in literature over martial arts. At the age of 18, Li Bai chose to live in seclusion on Mount Da Kuang in Jiang Yu, Sichuan province, dedicating himself to reading. He traveled to places like Jiang Yu, Jiang Ge, and Zizhou, which significantly broadened his experiences and insights. At the age of 24, Li Bai left his hometown and embarked on a long journey. He traveled north to Jianmen Pass, south to Chengdu and Mount Emei, then took a boat eastward to Chongqing, and later returned to Mianyang. A year later, he bid farewell to his family and ventured east through the Three Gorges to Yichang in Hubei. He then visited Zhujiang and ascended Mount Lu, where he wrote the famous poem, Looking at the Lu Mountain Waterfall. From then on, he never returned to Sichuan. The roads of Sichuan were difficult, more challenging than ascending to the blue sky, yet even more difficult was the unpredictability of fate. At 26, Li Bai traveled to Yangzhou and fell ill in Suzhou. During a midnight contemplation of the moon, he wrote the poem, Quiet Night Thoughts. After recovering, he took a boat from Yangzhou down the Grand Canal of the Sui and Tang dynasties, crossed the Qiantang River to Shaoxing, and then followed the Kao River upstream to Tiantai Mountain in Shengzhou, where he climbed to the peak and wrote, Morning View from Tiantai Mountain. Afterwards, he traveled to Anlu County in Hubei Province, meeting Li Yong and Meng Haoran along the way. A year later, Li Bai married the granddaughter of the Prime Minister, Xu Yuanxi, Miss Xu, and settled in Anlu. This was during the zenith of the Tang Dynasty, known as the Kaiyuan Era, marked by unprecedented economic prosperity and significant population growth under the reign of Emperor Xuanzong. At the age of 30, upon learning that Meng Haran was heading to Yangzhou, Li Bai went to bid him farewell and wrote the famous poem, Sending Off Meng Haran to Yangzhou from the Yellow Crane Tower. As a witness to the prosperity of the Tang Dynasty, Li Bai took a detour through Nanyang that year to Changhan hoping to gain the recommendation of the Prime Minister Zhang Shuo for a government position. He also visited other princes and high officials, but to no avail. The reason why Li Bai did not participate in the imperial examinations, though not recorded in history, is worth exploring. During the early to middle Tang dynasty, the number of candidates admitted through the imperial examinations was relatively small and their status was somewhat low. Additionally, Li Bai's family background was somewhat obscure, with inconsistent records in historical texts and even a lack of a family registry which would have disqualified him from taking the imperial examinations. Therefore, he chose to seek official appointment through the recommendation of high officials. While in Chang'an, 
Li Bai resided in the separate residence of Princess Yujin, the younger sister of Emperor Xuanzong. She was an early devotee of Taoism and often gathered literati and Taoists for banquets and entertainment. Li Bai, being one of them, wrote a poem for the princess, praising her ethereal Taoist aura. There were rumors of a romantic history between Li Bai and Princess Yuzhen, but judging from later events, it seems unlikely that Li Bai and Princess Yuzhen had a deep relationship. Disheartened, Li Bai traveled to Binzhou in late autumn and then to Binzhou in winter before returning to Chang'an. After spending about a year in Chang'an and facing financial difficulties, Li Bai left the city. During this period, his friend Wang Yan went to Sichuan, inspiring Li Bai to write the poem Difficult Roads of Shu as a gift to Wang Yan. Upon returning to Anlu, Li Bai lived a simple life of farming and reading, occasionally traveling and making friends. At the age of 34, Li Bai traveled north to Luoyang, where he met and befriended Kui Zongji. It was during a drinking session with friends on Mount Song where he composed the poem Bring in the Wine. It was also in this year that Li Bai presented his work Ode to the Ming Tang to Emperor Xuanzong, praising the grandeur of the Ming Tang and the magnificent era of Kai Yuan, hoping to secure an official position through this offering. Due to his family background, Li Bai was ineligible for the regular imperial examinations and had to seek office through presenting his literary works, explaining why he chose this route to pursue a career in government. A year later, when Emperor Xuanzong went out hunting, Li Bai, who was also traveling in the West, seized the opportunity to present his Ode to the Grand Hunt, hoping to win the Emperor's favor. In the same year, Li Bai offered a poem to Princess Yuzhen in Chang'an, assisting her in her Taoist pursuits and thus gradually getting closer to the upper echelons of the ruling class. Three years later, Li Bai, expressing his frustrations with, The road is difficult, I shall return, left Chang'an. At the age of 40, after the death of his wife, Lady Shu, Li Bai moved to the region of Lu and lived in seclusion with friends Han Huai, Pei Zheng, and others on Mount Tulaishan, indulging in wine and song, known as the Six Hermits of Jukshi. Soon after, Li Bai's fate took another turn. Recommended by Princess Yuzhen and Hei Jizhang, Emperor Xuanzong, impressed by Li Bai's master, summoned the 42-year-old poet to Chang'an. On the day Li Bai was received at the palace, the emperor stepped down from his chariot to greet him. Li Bai, with his extensive learning and long-term social observations, answered the emperor's questions fluently. Emperor Xuanzong, greatly impressed, immediately appointed Li Bai to the Hanlin Academy to compose poetry and prose for the emperor's entertainment and to accompany him. However, contrary to Li Bai's expectations of achieving great things, Emperor Xuanzong's summoning was not genuinely out of appreciation for his talent. Rather, it was to use Li Bai's verses to glorify his own reign. Li Bai realized that the emperor had no intention of hosting him or involving him in political matters, only employing him as an attendant and for his poetic skills. At the age of 43, Li Bai was commissioned to write poems such as Palace Revels and Clear and Peaceful Melody. Over time, he grew bored with the life of a court-appointed poet. He spent his days drinking and reveling, becoming part of the Eight Immortals of the Wine Cup with He Zhang and others. Li Bai's ability to compose a hundred poems over a single jug of wine and his reputation for heavy drinking and sleep in Chang Han was vividly captured in Du Fu's famous poem, which described Li Bai as the immortal of the wine cup. However, at this time, Li Bai had not yet met Du Fu. Their fateful meeting would occur two years later. One day, when Emperor Xuanzong requested Li Bai to compose music lyrics, Li Bai, in a drunken state, wrote over a dozen chapters and even asked the chief eunuch Gao Lishi to remove his boots. Li Bai's arrogance attracted the envy and resentment of some at court, 
who slandered him in front of Emperor Xuanzong, leading to a growing estrangement. At 44, realizing he would never be given a significant role, Li Bai left Chang'an. In Luoyang, he met the 33-year-old Du Fu. They hit it off immediately and became close friends, traveling together to Shangqiu in Henan. After parting ways, Li Bai went to Ziji Palace in Jinan, Shandong, to receive Taoist teachings. He formally underwent Taoist rituals and became a Taoist priest, composing the poem The Hero's Journey. A year later, Li Bai and Du Fu met for the third time at Xiaqiu, deepening their friendship. Li Bai wrote the poem, sending off Du Fu below the walls of Xiaqiu city. After this, the two never met again. By this time, Li Bai was 46 years old, having lived over two-thirds of his life. In the following eight years, he traveled south to Yangzhou, wrote Ascending the Phoenix Terrace in Nanjing, and centered his travels around Nanjing, visiting Tiantai Mountain, Huoshan, and Lushan. After returning to his home in Yanzhou, Shandong, he traveled north from Fengqiu to Anyang, then through Handan in Hebei to Beijing, eventually returning to Shangqiu. After a period of rest, Li Bai left Shangqiu and went on a spring journey to Nanjing again, traveled down to Yangzhou, and then continued south to Jiuzi Mountain. After renaming Juzi Mountain to Juhua Mountain, he continued south to visit Huangshan. While visiting Taohua, Peach Blossom Pool, Li Bai wrote the farewell poem, A Farewell to My Friend, Wang Lun. At this time, Li Bai had become aware of the underlying crises beneath the glorious facade of the prosperous Tang Dynasty. He realized that once this illusion was shattered, the lion beneath the splendid robes of the prosperous era would reveal its true form. And the person to break this illusion would be An Lushan. In 755 AD, An Lushan rebelled under the pretext of punishing Yang Guozhong, the brother of Yang Guifei, rapidly sweeping across the central plains in what became known as the An Lushan Rebellion. Within a few months, the rebel forces captured Chang'an, forcing Emperor Xuanzong to flee south to Sichuan. His crown prince, Li Heng, ascended the throne in Lingwu, becoming Emperor Suzong of Tang. From this point, the Tang dynasty began its decline from its peak. Li Bai, 56 years old at the time, was traveling in Jinling, Nanjing. Upon hearing of the turmoil in the central plains, he hurriedly took his family south to seek refuge hiding in Mount Lu. Prince Yong, Li Lin, the 16th son of Emperor Xuanzong, hearing of Li Bai's fame, sought to enlist him in his service. Initially reluctant to become involved in the chaotic situation, Li Bai eventually joined Prince Yong's ranks after several invitations. Li Bai wrote the poem Song of Prince Yong's Eastern Tour to express his desire to contribute to the country. Ambitious Prince Yong, commanding troops from four regions, led his navy on an eastern tour towards Tangzhou. He was eventually accused of rebellion by Emperor Suzong and was surrounded and attacked. Unfortunately, Li Bai was also implicated and imprisoned. Li Bai's second wife, Lady Zong, tirelessly sought his release which was eventually granted through the intercession of the imperial censor Song Ruosi. Song Ruosi wanted to recommend Li Bai for an official position, but Emperor Suzong, holding a grudge against anyone associated with Prince Yong, exiled Li Bai to Yelang. At the age of 58, Li Bai left the Jujiang prison and headed towards Yelang, traveling through Huangxi in Hubei to Wuhan, then through the Three Gorges and Chongqing to reach Yelang. In 759 AD, due to a severe drought in Guangzhou, the imperial court announced a general amnesty. This decree included those exiled for lesser crimes, and Li Bai, then 59, finally gained his freedom after a long period of wandering. He promptly headed north, embarking on the last journey of his life. His rapid journey down the Yangtze River 
is best reflected in his famous poem, Departure at Dawn, from Baidi City. Arriving in Jiangxia, he stayed for a while as his old friend Liang Zai was serving as the local prefect. In the second year of the Qianyuan era, Li Bai, at the invitation of a friend, joined the exiled Jiaji on a moonlit boat trip on Lake Dongting, indulging in nostalgic thoughts and composing poetry to express his feelings. Soon after, he returned to his old haunts in Xuancheng and Jinling, spending about two years traveling between these two places, still relying on others for support. In the second year of the Shangyuan era, 761 AD, Li Bai, now over 60 years old, returned to Jinling due to illness. In Jinling, his life was quite difficult and he had no choice but to seek refuge with his relative Li Yangbing, who was serving as the magistrate of Dangtu County. In the third year of the Shangyuan era, 762 AD, Li Bai became seriously ill. On his deathbed, he handed his manuscripts to Li Yangbing, composing the Song of Approaching Death before passing away at the age of 62. The circumstances of Li Bai's death have been a subject of much speculation and debate, broadly categorized into three theories. Death by drunkenness, illness, or drowning. One, death by drunkenness. This version is found in the Old Book of Tang, which states that Li Bai died of excessive drinking in Xuancheng. Two, death by illness. This theory is also supported by other official histories and the research of scholars. It suggests that when Li Guangbi was stationed in Linhuai, Li Bai, despite being 61 years old, went to offer his services in battle, hoping to contribute to the salvation of the state in his twilight years. He fell ill on the way and returned, eventually dying of illness the following year at the residence of Li Yangbing, the county magistrate of Dangtu, and a famous seal script calligrapher of the Tang Dynasty. 3. Death by Drowning This more romanticized and popular folk version says that Li Bai, while drinking on a boat in Dangtu, drowned after jumping into the river to catch the moon's reflection, a story fitting with the poet's character. Regardless of the actual cause, Li Bai's involvement with Prince Yongli Lin's rebellion played a direct role in his later life. After being exiled to Yelang and then pardoned, Li Bai's life, filled with both legend and hardship, came to an end, an undisputed fact in his extraordinary biography. As we reach the end of our journey through the life of Li Bai, we are left with a picture of a man as complex and intriguing as his poetry. He wasn't just a poet, he was a symbol of unbridled spirit and romanticism. His love for wine, skill in swordsmanship, and endless wanderlust have inspired countless generations. Li Bai's legacy is not just in his words, but in the emotions he evokes and the cultural footprint he has left behind. As we reflect on his life, it's clear that his poetry was more than just words on a page. It was an expression of his very essence. Now it's over to you, our dear viewers. What are your thoughts on Li Bai? Do you have a favorite poem or a story about him that resonates with you? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this dive into the world of Li Bai, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Your support helps us create more fascinating videos exploring the rich tapestry of history and culture. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.